Hello, boys and girls. It's when I feel like it o'clock, and I'm Pearl of Wisdom. You're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, where we're doing a little series on what if Kane went to every single team? And the reason why we're doing that is because Chicago Blackhawks came out, of course, everybody in the land should know this by now, and said they're doing a rebuild. Um, they used the word rebuild, as they told their fans, and uh, they did things very rebuildish, like... Uh, trading Crawford to New Jersey and not replacing Crawford. So they're going with two young players, uh, young goaltenders, well, Dalia and Subban, 24-25, who have not been able to establish themselves up in, in, to, in the league so far. I think, actually, Subban could be even uh, a little older than that, actually. Uh, let me check here. We'll go back to Chicago, and I'll take that back to Minnesota because that's going to be one of the teams we're talking about today it is the Minnesota Wild as one of the teams that may go. Subban's 26. They're both 26. And at 26, probably want to be established a little more in the league right now to be a number one. Dalia has been basically an AHL or whole, his whole career. Uh, Subban Malcolm, or Malcolm Subban, I should say, uh, went from... Boston to Vegas and neither organization found a use for him and then he ended up going to Chicago in the laner trade so um, not voting very well for Chicago fans let me tell you that right now and of course Taves went off and said what the heck is going on and then they put out a message to all the land that we are going to be going through a bit of a rebuild. Now, how that rebuild is going to look, we don't exactly know. But uh, by not having any goaltenders, basically, uh, they also have a kid called Lakinen who did really well in Finland and has been meh in, uh, the, uh, AH, or in the AHL, in the minors. So this is a really good way, I think, of letting your players know that hey you know we don't they all have no trade clauses so one way to kind of convince people to not to kind of remove their no trade clauses or at least uh, work with them on trading them is to say we're not gonna win I played hockey up until midget and I can tell you this for sure and any player will tell you there is nothing more frustrating than to play on a team where the goaltending isn't very good because you can do whatever you want. You can work as hard as you want, play the, as good a defense as you can, and you're not gonna win on a regular basis without goaltending. So I think that's just sort of the message here and maybe out of enough of a uh, hint that you, know, you might wanna think about uh, looking at those no trade clauses. So anyways, I got into some fun times and I've been doing it in reverse of al alphabetical order uh, all the way to uh, now we're at the O. We did um, Toronto and Tampa and Winnipeg and all of that and my other ones, you can go check them out. They're pretty cool. I like them. I like them a lot. A lot of people liked them. A lot of people liked the video. So if you like the videos, I love that. I hit that like button. Let YouTube know that you're enjoying this fine programming and they will make it so it goes to more people in the land and I can do more of it. Uh, also, thank you for your subscriptions. Uh, the Perlocopter is, is working hard. Uh, Melissa and uh, Hernandez are out there grinding it out in the Perlocopter is getting you your My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklaces, which you will receive by hitting that subscribe button. Thank you very much. So let's get to it, shall we? We're gonna look at a couple today where we'll go through pretty quick. Patrick Kane, we're doing Patrick Kane to all teams. What would happen? What would it take? What's the likelihood? Uh, the likelihood here is very slim and that's mostly because he uh, Kane would have to, uh, can, uh, he's an American for one. This is a rebuilding team for two. And he'd have to uh, nix his no trade clause to go here, which the only reason why he would be doing that is because they're rebuilding and he wants to continue on winning. So because they love Chicago, all of them, Taves, Taves is another one that's probably going to be out there. Keith is another one. 
that would likely be moving on if they decide to do so. So I would say I'm not going to go too far into this one because the likelihood is just way too slim. So let's move over to the New York Rangers. Now the New York Rangers, Kane is a right winger. This makes a heck of a lot of sense if they can think they if they think they can win in the next three years. Personally, I can't see why they can't. Uh, Truba, Lindgren, Fox, uh, Tony D'Angelo is your top four. He brought in Jack Johnson as a filler. Ryan Lindgren is a fantastic defenseman. However, in this trade, now this would also depend a lot on who, where uh, Kane would go. But Chicago doesn't have to trade Kane. So they're not going to trade him for nothing. It's simple as that. They don't have the greatest leverage because he has a no trade clause and all of that sort of thing like that. But they don't have to trade him. He isn't, he's only 31 years old. He's got three years left on his deal. They can keep on riding with him. No problems if they're not going to get something back decent enough in return. So a deal like this, first of all, Buknevich is, has been on like, in trade rumors for quite a while now. So Buknevich, uh, simply because if they were to do uh, an expansion draft right now, it's very possible that Buknevich would be one of the people on the way out anyways. So they could throw out Buknevich to handle that $3.25 million contract there. Uh, also, they've got $10 million in cap space. And uh, so they could handle it, but there's other guys to sign coming up for sure, that is going to cause some problems for their cap space. One of those being, um, you know, Capo Capo is going to need a deal here so again. Philip Heidel is going to need another deal. Uh, let's look at that, shall we? Can we look at that? Let's look at some of the guys that are going to need deals. Ryan Strom, if they decide to give him, and that's another guy they can throw in there. Ryan Strom, restricted free agent. Uh, if they brought him in, he plays right, he plays center. They don't really need him. They have Philip Heidel that can fill that spot. They could they could put Ryan Strom and Biknevich in there and throw a first-round draft pick. Now, I think Chicago will be looking for a defenseman. And if I am Chicago, my I'd be like, uh, if possibly they could offer up Anthony D'Angelo, who, if there was an expansion draft, would also probably be on the way out as well. So... That's something. And this would probably happen at the trade deadline if it were to happen. It's probably not going to happen before that. But Anthony Giangelo, either uh, Strom or Buknevich, who are both fairly young. Strom put up some really good numbers last year. Uh, let's look at his numbers. He put up 59 points in 70 games. Not too bad. And he's you've seen an upward pro, um, progression in his game all the way through. So he could even have some offensive upside. Uh, Buknevich is a 20-some goal scorer. And then they'd also get their first-round pick. And Anthony D'Angelo is only a 25-year-old defenseman. Something like that actually could work for uh, the Rangers. And you say, well, they're a rebuilding team. But, okay, they are. But are they really rebuilding? I mean, this is a team that... Uh, at the second half of last year was probably the best team in the league. And they have all of their young, like all of their young players they have. Philip Heidel is, is only 21 years old. He looks, they love, love, love him. And for good reason, he's going to be amazing. They just got Alexis Lafreniere. And yes, it's going to take him a little while to adjust to the league, but two, three years from now, probably no problems. And we're talking about Kane for two, three years. Now I know he makes ten and a half million dollars, but you throw him, take Buknevich out of here, and throw Kane in. And you have Panarin, Zibanejad, and Kane. And then you still have Kapo Kako, who, you got, who, we, who the New York Rangers got two years ago. Who is pro he got 21 points as a 19-year-old in 62 games. I'm pretty sure there's a heck of a lot of upside there. You put Philip Heidel up here and Chris Kreider, and that's one of the best top sixes in the league now. It's not even a rebuild. Like, this is a ready to win right now. And if they think that, I could see them making a move like this. So the Rangers, I could see as a very good possibility for Kane. Also, Kane is from Buffalo, New York. So it's kind of homish. So, which leads us to the next one. The New York Islanders. Would the Islanders be interested in Kane? I think every team would be interested. It's just a case of 
whether they would be able to do so or not. Yes, I think they'd be interested. They're capped all the heck, though. they got to sign Barzal. Any deal for Kane is probably going to have to cost... They're probably going to want to give up uh, like a Josh Bailey, who I don't think Chicago would be interested in acquiring in this deal. Uh, I think they'd be looking at Anthony Beauvillier. Um, they want, again, they want to give up Nick Letty. I think the only problem here with the New York Islanders, although they, I'm sure they would be very bullish on this deal, is that they... I can't see where they can get rid of the cap space enough to get Kane. There's only one way they, they could possibly work. If Chicago were to get another team involved and they did a three-team deal and somebody like Josh Bailey and was willing to give a first pick for him, and by the way, Josh Bailey is one of the most underrated players in the league. Um, uh, if I'm a team, I would strongly consider that. Possibly Jordan Eberle or somebody like that. If they could find another suitor for somebody like that and take and trade them for a pick, that may work. Uh, Eberle wouldn't work because he's got a no trade clause. But Josh Bailey, maybe. And then take Anthony Bovillier on top of it. This is going to really weaken their, their, their depth for the Islanders to make this sort of a deal. But knowing Lamorello, he'd be smacking his lips at getting somebody like Kane just for the heck of it. And then defense, I'm afraid they would be looking for like Noah Dobson, and I'm sure that would be a deal breaker. Um, possibly, you know, a goaltender. I They're not going to let Ilya Sorokin go, I'll tell you right now. That kid, that guy is not really a kid anymore. He's going to come in next year, and he's probably going to take Semyon Varlamov's spot. I'm sure they would offer Varlamov, but I don't see Chicago after giving away Crawford to do this rebuild, taking on a Varlamov back to play goal when they're doing a rebuild anyway. So a lot of not many scenarios really work out here for the Islanders. But for the heck of it, let's look at the depth chart. If you did, you could take Kane, move Everly down here. This is assuming we lost Josh Bailey somehow, and uh, Everly down here with Nelson and Beauvillier, and you've got Kane. Barzal and Anders Lee on a trots-led team that has a difficult time scoring. I'm sure Lamorella would be doing everything he could to make a deal like this happen. I'm just I'm pretty positive that he would, but I don't think it would work out for them. The New Jersey Devils, I'm not going to talk about this one too much either because really the New Jersey Devils are, are rebuilding more in, more in the rebuild mode than they are ready right now. Um, their depth, I mean, they could always use it to, a, a scoring winger. There's no doubt about that. But they really have no defensemen to give up. It's probably going to cost them. Uh, the only thing good about New Jersey is they could make this deal if they wanted to and really not give much money back. So they could offer like a Pavel Zaka, who may, some people may still see him as a solid third line center in the future. And I think it's very possible. Um they could offer up Palmieri, uh, but I don't think they'd be looking for a guy of that age that still has a contract coming up as a UFA and could decide not to stick around and leave at any time. So somebody, something like pa pa Zaka, maybe Miles Wood, and uh, you know they don't. The problem here is they don't really have defensemen to give up, and the only defensemen they have are really prospects. And of those prospects, it'd be Ty Smith. And uh, they are not going to give him up. That would be a deal breaker. And I just don't think they're going to need a guy like Kane right now in this time of the rebuild. So I'm going to leave that one alone for now. Let's look at the Nashville Predators, shall we? Nashville Predators are a place this could definitely do. I could definitely see David Poyle doing something of this nature. Um, they could offer up Arvidsson back. And you've got Kane. Ryan Johansson or Matt Duchesne. You could get Matt Duchesne a guy to pass to with a guy to pass to. Philip Forsberg. The problem that has been going on with uh, Matt Duchesne and Philip Forsberg, and the reason why they have Johansson here, is Philip Forsberg likes the puck, and so does Duchesne. And that combination doesn't work very well usually. However, Kane can play with or without the puck 
equally as well. You can throw it onto Shane's stick and uh, they can work magic together, I am sure. I'm pretty sure Nashville, who really wants to win now, uh, they want to use this defense core as much as they possibly can of Josie, Ellis, and Ekholm, who are getting on the, on the high side of their ages here to have a chance to win a cup. Um, now, they, I imagine Chicago would be asking for Dante Fabro, and I'm pretty sure they would be loath to do that. But it's quite possible. If they were going to say, let's say Luke Cunning, take Luke Cunning off of our hands and we'll throw Kane in this spot with Carl Yonkrock and Dante Fabro. And then um, it's possible because if we look at their prospects, they have a fellow named... David Ference, who is just eating up the college ranks, which Nashville tends to do. Any one of these guys, knowing Nashville, can turn into a defenseman like at any time. Uh, they can play in the league. So I think he'd be bullish on it. He'd be trying not to give up a defenseman. And by the way, that's why people draft defensemen so much, uh, because they're hard to find. They're hard to get. And uh, if... Uh, if uh, a team doesn't have them, they, when they have them, they keep them, and it's very difficult to acquire them, even for a guy like Kane. You never know. Dante Favreau, Cunning, but I know one thing, that for sure, uh, Poyle would be very interested in this trade, which leads us to the Montreal Canadiens, who have done a lot already and have no cap room. We didn't look at Nashville's cap room. I'll quickly look at that for you to see if that even could work. Uh, sorry, Nashville. Nashville, 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 Nashville. I'm pretty sure they have 12 million in cap space. Yeah, so they could bring money back. They could do a lot of things. That's another reason why I like them is they had the cap space to do a deal like that, and they're bullish on winning now. So the combination seemed to work. Montreal Canadiens very bullish on winning now by a lot of the moves they made. However, in doing so, they've left themselves in kind of a cap hell for this year. But next year, there's a lot of options. They don't have to sign Armia. They don't have to sign Jordan Whale. Uh, they can think about Tatar. Now, here's the thing. They could, in a deal like this, and uh, who knows with uh, Bergevin what he might do. I know he'd be very interested in Kane. He'd also be very interested in Taves, too, because they have two young players. We talked about this, uh, by Steel Flyers, by the way, Steel Flyers website, unbelievable. Check it out. Uh, and Joe Bork, who works with me at uh, BPAL Picks for um, giving fine uh, quality uh, betting tips and picks at uh, BPAL on Patreon. We did a video on... Uh, on, on the Chicago Blackhawks, and we talked about that. You can go check it out anytime. We talked about how Montreal would, might be bullish on Taves. Uh, they don't have cap space, I'll just tell you that right now, uh, but they do have, again, a lot of guys coming off the books. They also have some very young uh, centers in Suzuki and um, Suzuki and Kokaniemi. Why do they not have Kokaniemi up here? I guess they have him in the minors. Uh, at right now based on the fact that he was when he was in the during the regular season, but They could use scoring big time and a guy that can put up 90 points like Kane He would definitely be very interested. I'm not sure if Kane would like to go to Canada But I mean You've got the problem being is it'd be hard to find a place for him. You'd have to play Josh Anderson down here They already have to Foley. This probably doesn't work They've just did too many moves right now. I'm sure they would be interested, but I'm not going to talk much more about it because they really can't give up defense. And I think it's pretty likely that Kane would not be interested in going to Montreal. So we'll go to the last one. That's the Minnesota Wild. This one is the most interesting one. Um, they have sort of had cap space. They have like $4 million. They could make a deal where they send somebody back. I'm sure they'd want to do that with Zuccarello in that contract, but Chicago would be having none of that. The main problem with Minnesota is they need a center. Um, I have a feeling, though, they think their last pick that they picked up in the draft, who I think might have been the steal of the draft, Yossi, 
might be their uh, guy that they could get, that they could play right now. Like, he's that good. He could play right now. Um, would be nice to have a winger with cups on this team if they think they're going that direction. This would really kind of depend on which direction Minnesota decides that they want to go. Uh, it would really depend on where they are at the trade deadline, but it is it is possible. I don't think it's impossible. One of the reasons why is there's always been talk about Matt Dumba being traded. So much talk that I think it's, you know, it, they, most people believe it's very likely that he will. I don't know what they're going to do with their defense after that, honestly, because they really don't have much in the minors to fill in that spot. Uh, if they do trade them, it, might, it can only be because they really just are not, uh, things are just not gelling with this organization in Dumba. But if they offered somebody like Matt Dumba, 26 years old, $6 million for the next couple of years, that would definitely pique the interest of Chicago. Um, then they could possibly look at another right winger. Um, but I don't think they're going to, it's going to be Fiala and, uh, Kirill Kaprizov. They have been waiting for him for quite some time. Um, it would probably have to be somebody like Greenway or something like that. The more I look at this, the more unlikely it seems to be that this would work out. I just don't see them having the prospects and the combination of defense besides Matt Dumba. Maybe Matt Dumba in their first next year. That may work because um, Dumba is a top. They, they really need defensemen bad in Chicago, young defensemen especially. And the first round drift, Minnesota, if it's an unprotected first round pick, could be a very high pick next year. That would be, that could possibly do it. That's my full 42% boys and girls. That's all I have to give today. Thanks again for your subscription and thanks for watching all these fine programming. I'll be coming back more. I guess we're going to be starting now with uh, what, LM. I don't know. You figure it out. A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, L. Maybe the LA Kings. The LA Kings and down from there. It's going to be fun. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you. Remember, steelflyers.com. That website is going to be amazing. It already is pretty cool.